Now at 10, the Carthage City Council addresses some issues at tonight's meeting, but censure wasn't one of them. Plus, the Joplin School District opens up pre-enrollment for kindergarten students. And love blooms in Joplin as some of the city's florists get ready for Valentine's Day. The four states most watched news starts now. A proposal to censure a Carthage City Council member was not a topic at tonight's council meeting and some sort of settlement might be in the works. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. Now, you might recall this Carthage City Council meeting drew a packed house last month when the council considered censuring member Tiffany Cossey. At that time, the council postponed taking action, saying the matter would be brought up at the next meeting, which was tonight. However, the issue was not on tonight's agenda and was not discussed. City Administrator Greg Dagnan tells us the council is working on a settlement in this issue. We contacted Kasi tonight. She confirms both parties are working on a settlement and she expects an agreement soon, but no formal agreement has been reached. Pre-enrollment for Joplin School District kindergartners is now open. Any child who will be five years old before August 1st and who lives within district boundaries is eligible for pre-enrollment. Parents must fill out online forms before bringing state required documents to the school their child will attend. Joplin administrators say this process might seem overwhelming, but they're ready to help. Not to get stressed about it, that it's um, just simple, basic information, just the normal stuff that you already have. So no need to stress. We have a lot of time. We can get it all here and get them started on time. Once the enrollment process is completed, parents will need to work with their school to schedule a kindergarten screening. Those screenings will take place from March 25th to April 5th. Some flower shops in Joplin rose to the occasion as they prepared for Valentine's Day. Flower shop owners and employees started planning for their busiest day of the year back in December. KOIM's Fernandez Silva has that story. On Valentine's Day week, Judy and Lynn's Hulupai, owners of Hingdon Florist, keep an eye everywhere. The Feast of St. Valentine's is their busiest day every year. Everyone wants their flowers on February 14th. Um, Mother's Day is also busy, but that stretches out through the whole week. And then um, Sunday we normally close to enjoy Mother's Day. On Valentine's Day, closing is not an option. Instead, they work extra hours the day before and think of all the details. You cannot um, create the flower arrangements too early because then the roses will all be fully open. You know, we want to make sure that the recipients will be able to enjoy those flowers for as long as possible. As soon as the day hits, uh, we would like it to go smooth, and for the most part it does, but there's going to be hiccups. People are not going to be home. Um, sometimes the flowers that we get in from the farms may not be in the condition we want them, so we'll have to make adjustments. Making adjustments and being flexible is essential for the flower businesses when Valentine's Day is around. At Curly Willow, when they have 50 times more orders than on a usual day, working extra hours becomes part of their routine. Before Valentine's Day, we definitely spend a lot more hours preparing. Um, we have some gifts that are not flowers, so we definitely get those ready beforehand all that we can. Um, but our hours are extended for us. So we are here earlier in the mornings and later in the evenings. She says this year they ordered almost 700 roses and had to hire extra staff to accommodate all the orders. But the businesses say love can be spread more often. We emphasize the fact that Valentine's is actually 365 days a year. If you love somebody, why wait for Valentine's? Just do it any old time. For next year, Lenz also advises buyers to plan ahead. Valentine's Day is the same day every year. Order early. In Joplin, Fernanda Silva, KOEM News. The flower shops also said clients might see flower prices a little bit higher than last year. According to them, red roses are the most popular flowers on Valentine's Day. Weather well, looking nice for the day after Valentine's Day. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty. Yeah, it turned out to be a great day for us today. Temperatures are right around 60 degrees during the afternoon. Started kind of cold, 29 this morning, average high is 59, so 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year. All right, let's look outside. It's 45 Independence, 44 in Welch, 43 in Neosho. 
Stockton is sitting at 43 degrees. The winds, we've had these southerly winds uh, again for us today, kind of at that 5 to 10 to 15 miles per hour. But these southerly winds will keep our temperatures up just a little bit. Clear skies right now. We're going to continue to see clear skies as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Uh, not a whole bunch going on across the entire central plain. So as we go through the night into the morning hours, we'll drop back to about 37, back to 50 by 10 a.m. Of course, we're going to look at your parade forecast and the rest of the week here in just a bit. All right, we'll see you soon. Today is Mardi Gras, the day before many Christian denominations begin the season of Lent. Well, a local nursing home is celebrating with the help of these furry friends. The residents at St. Luke's Assisted Living Facility in Carthage enjoy activities such as bingo and socializing. And on this Fat Tuesday, things were a bit more festive than usual. Instead of a band and floats, it's cute furry friends passing out licks and beads. The ones who will point out and go, oh, I had a dog just like that. And you just bring them right over and the dogs just connect with them and they're, it makes them happy all day long. How can you not be happy when you see a face like that? This is the first year that St. Luke's has celebrated Mardi Gras in this particular way. By the way, Lent ends with Easter, which falls on March 31st this year. The Joplin Area Organization today made a donation to Camp Childress. The camp provides recreation services for young adults and teaches them leadership skills. The organization 100 Women Who Care today donated $3,900 to the camp. Bathroom need, the restroom need here is great. Um, you know, for families to come out, the outhouses, et cetera, are, are just not enough. And yet here is a perfect place to spend in nature and um, getting to know each other and getting to know nature. Since it was formed in 2018, that organization has donated more than $60,000 to local charities. 20 teams today took part in the Southeast Kansas Youth Basketball and Cheer event. That event, hosted by Special Olympics Kansas, featured a cheer competition and basketball competition. For Special Olympics officials, the event served as another way to spread some joy. Honestly, it makes me so happy because seeing their reaction of making a basket or making that pass to one of their teammates, it just excites them and it excites everyone in the crowd and I think it just brings everyone joy and everyone gets excited for them. Special Olympics Kansas has fun events all year round and they always welcome volunteers. The solar eclipse coming up in April has captured the imagination of the nation and kids in Joplin are no different. Today, kids at the Alliance Learning Center came up with some ideas to pack a time capsule in celebration of the upcoming event to be sealed away until the next solar eclipse. The hope is that everyone involved with the project will return to unseal the capsule. The time capsule will live here over the course of the 20 years, and hopefully the 14 children in the room will be still in the Joplin area and able to come back and open it um, in 20 years. And that will be, I mean, well, hopefully I'll be here in 20 years so that I can be here to open and help them open the time capsule. That capsule is going to remain buried until the next solar eclipse visible in the United States. That'll be in 2044. Later in sports, the Lions hit the diamond to take on Oklahoma Baptist. John's going to have highlights of today's game in just a few minutes, but first. President Biden slams former President Trump's comments on NATO. I'm Skyler Henry in Washington with the sharp criticism as the 2024 race for the White House heats up. Incorporated in the ocean of 7, 10, 20 for a free brochure. As the 2024 race for the White House heats up, uh, President Biden delivers some sharp words about former President Trump's uh, controversial comments on NATO. Skyler Henry has the latest. President Biden spoke out about former President Donald Trump's eyebrow-raising remarks on NATO. The former president has sent a dangerous and shockingly, frankly, un-American signal to the world. On Saturday, the former president said he wouldn't defend NATO allies from a Russian attack if they fail to pay full dues to the military alliance. Let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. No other president in our history has ever bowed down to a Russian dictator. 
For God's sake, it's dumb, it's shameful, it's dangerous, it's un-American. President Biden also urged House Republicans to bring up a more than $95 billion aid package to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan to a vote. Supporting this bill is standing up to Putin. Opposing it is playing into Putin's hands. The Senate passed the bill early in the day, but House Speaker Mike Johnson says he won't bring it to the floor because it contains no mention of security on the U.S. border with Mexico. National security begins with border security. That sentiment comes as Trump has said GOP lawmakers shouldn't support any border security deal that could benefit Democrats and President Biden. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. There's just over a week until Trump faces off in the primary against Nikki Haley in her home state of South Carolina. Trump returns to the Palmetto State for a rally tomorrow evening. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly has ordered flags flown at half-staff this Friday from sunrise until sunset. The order is in recognition of this man, Lance Corporal Donovan Davis, the Olathe, Kansas native, who died in a helicopter crash in California with four other Marines earlier this month. A Web City, Missouri man pleads guilty to child sex crimes. Authorities say Delmar Hill sexually assaulted a minor over a period of years at his home. Today, he pled guilty to first degree statutory sodomy and second degree statutory sodomy. Hill will serve 10 years in prison for his crimes. Small businesses in rural Kansas affected by persistent drought will soon receive some help. Six business resiliency boot camps will be offered in coming months. These boot camps will focus on business and marketing training and will be free for business owners to attend. That first boot camp is planned for March 1st. It'll be at Neosho County Community College in Chanute. We have more details on our website. Of course, that's koamnewsnow.com. A little bit later, fans of Frontenac football are going to soon see a familiar face. John has details on the Raiders' new head coach. Plus, warming up even a little bit more for us on Wednesday. Those details coming up next. Well, it definitely turned out to be a nice day for us today, and we're going to warm up even more as we go into your Wednesday. Temperatures are going to be fantastic, and we're on the third Super Bowl winning parade in Kansas City since this time in 2020. Uh, so pretty good run there. Now, if you remember back uh, in 2020 and then also last year, it was pretty cold. This year, it's actually going to be really nice. By 10 a.m., nearly 50 degrees Temperatures are going to be much warmer than what we have seen. Uh, plus, we're going to have plenty of sunshine. Things really get going at about 11 o'clock in the morning. By noon, 56, 62 by 2 p.m. So if you're heading up to Union Station or around it, temperatures are going to be pretty good. Now, if you can't go, like me, you can stream it on the KOM YouTube channel. We're going to be streaming through the entire thing, but at least the weather looks fantastic. All right, going back to yesterday, we had 3.5 inches of snow. In Joplin yesterday morning, just so you know where we're at for the season, 6.5 inches. Average is 13, so we've reached the amount of snow we had last winter, but still we're falling short of our average. But I don't think we're done yet. I think we got one or two more snows to squeeze out before winter is done. Looking outside, nice shot. This is Indigo Sky Casino and Resort, of course, Indigo, just outside of Seneca, Missouri. Looks good. We are dry, temperature is not bad. Most of us, uh, low to mid 40s, case in point. 43 in uh, Carthage, 43 in Anderson, 42 in Miami. Chanute is sitting at 42 degrees. Let's go outside, seventh and range line. 44, southerly winds, five to 10 visibility is looking pretty good. A little breezy for us today. We have those southerly winds. Now, these are going to increase even a little bit more as we get into the daytime hours tomorrow. It's not bad out there right now, but this will keep our temperatures up a little bit, so it's not going to get as cold tonight compared to what we have seen over the past couple nights. But the winds are going to get moving a little bit tomorrow. We're going to have gas 15 to 20 to 25 miles per hour, and then getting in that 30 to 35 mile per hour range as we get into tomorrow night. Winds will switch out of the northeast on Thursday. It'll be breezy, but not near as windy as what we will see tomorrow. Clear skies, not a whole bunch going on outside for us right now. If we look to the west, we have one little wave. This will shoot by tomorrow night, a little stronger wave, which will affect us by the time we get into Friday. 
Let me walk you through time. We'll stop 7 a.m. mid to upper 30s. Sunny skies. We get near 60 by noon. Once we get into the afternoon, most of us 64, 65, 66 degrees. Tomorrow night, some clouds will kind of shoot on by some showers to our north, but we should stay dry. Northerly winds start to work in. So this is Thursday. So ushering in a little bit cooler air. It's not still going to be nice. 55, 56, 57 on Thursday, but a little bit cooler than what we are going to see tomorrow. Then clouds increase again tomorrow or Thursday night. Could get a few showers in here by the time we head into Friday morning. But overall, Wednesday, Valentine's Day looking great. 65 degrees, 57 on Thursday, 52 on Friday, a few morning showers. Cooling down a bit for the weekend, but still not awful. I mean, Saturday is going to be kind of cold, high temperature of 40 degrees. Yeah, but still okay to get outside. Yeah, not bad. I have 40 and sunny. Sure. Thanks, Doug. Hey, today the Joplin Library focused less on romance and more on friendship for Valentine's Day. They partnered with Coley's Cookies to host a Palentine's cookie workshop. Folks were able to stop by and learn how to decorate cookies like a pro. Well, Post Art Library, our acronym is PAL, and so we thought it would be fun to call it a Palentine's Day workshop. We wanted to really get across to people that you could come with your best friend, you could come with, you know, one of your relatives. It was a choice, and because I love her and, and she trusts me to sometimes make decisions when we find stuff, and I trust her, and it's a nice surprise. We all the materials and equipment were provided free of charge, including the heart-shaped cookies attendees decorated. Still ahead, Missouri Southern Baseball hopes to continue its domination at home. And Frontenac High School has its next head football coach. John Dales has those stories and more coming up next in sports. From Wayside Furniture and John... Two months ago, Pitt State's new head football coach, Tom Anthony, added Mark Smith to his coaching staff as the Gorillas wide receiver coach and passing game coordinator. That means Frontenac had a head coaching vacancy to fill. And the Raiders are hiring a familiar face. The Frontenac School District announces today it'll hire Leon Miller as its next head football coach. He was the head coach for the Raiders from 1989 to 2005. In that time, Frontenac won 74% of its games, took home the 1994 Class 2-1A state title, and had two runner-up finishes in 1992 and 2000. Miller has coached at several other high school football teams in the four states, including Parsons, Girard, and Neosho. Most recently, he was an assistant at Warsaw. And Joplin High School alum and the 2019-20 Missouri Gatorade Player of the Year, Isaiah Davis, has received an invite to the NFL Scouting Combine. Davis just finished his senior year at South Dakota State. Helped lead the Jackrabbits to a second consecutive FCS national title. He rushed for over 4,500 yards in his collegiate career to go with 50 touchdowns. The former Joplin Eagle is one of just 29 running backs in the country to be invited. The Combine takes place in Indianapolis at the end of the month. Missouri Southern Baseball continues its long homestand this afternoon. The Lions Went 3-0 against Wachita Baptist over the weekend. Including today, Southern has six more contests at Warren Turner Field through next week. Missouri Southern Baseball winners of three in a row. In Joplin facing Oklahoma Baptist. First inning, runner on second base and Henry Kuziak skies this to deep right field. The outfielder loses it in the sun. Well, it's over his head and over the wall anyways. Two run homer. And the Lions don't stop there. Later in the inning, Garrett Rice, two runners on, hammers this pitch down the line in left field. That's gone for a three-run shot. Southern jumps out to a 5-0 lead. Kyle Kemp gets the start on the mound for the Lions. He gets a strikeout swinging in the second, then another one looking to finish the frame. He finishes this one with five strikeouts and two earned runs in four innings. Hit parade continues. Third inning, Tragen Parker places a ground rule double down the line. Four more Lions score that inning. Southern dominates Oklahoma Baptist. Final score 21 to six. Game goes just seven innings. Closing things out with Web City Boys Hoops of hosting Joplin. Cardinals looking to stay undefeated in COC play. 
Early in the first, Eagles making things tough. Trenton Gage gets it and he nails the three in the corner. Eagles have a seven point lead on the road. Check this out. Eagles look to score, but Omari Jackson barely blocks it. Then the Cardinals go the other way, and that's Whit Hafer getting up for the big time block off the glass. Crowd goes nuts. Defensive first quarter, Duda then steals it in the second, tries to go on the fast break. That's blocked, but Eli Pace picks it up, knocks it in for two. Cardinals have their first lead. Look at this, here's Whit Hafer again, making his presence know with the two-handed slam over Holton Keith. That's ex as exciting as it would get for the Eagles, though. Second half, Baron Duda with a monster game. Omari Jackson finds him. He hits the three in the corner. Then 15 seconds later, Duda again. He finishes with 36 points and four steals. That helps lead Coach Horn to his 250th career win. Webb City stays undefeated in the COC and at home. Cardinals win 73 to 43. Another basketball note tonight, Riverton wins and Lock North of the Rams picks up his thousandth career points. Wow, congratulations, Dale. We'll be right back. Alone. If you are heading to Kansas City in the morning for that celebratory parade, you're going to enjoy the weather. It's going to be nicer than it has been in years past. Yeah, the 2020 parade, it was just barely cold. Last year, they almost moved it because of snow. This year, it's going to be in the 60s. So upper 50s to lower 60s during parade and rally time. Our high temp is 65 degrees, and it's Valentine's Day. And, of course, if they want to see the parade and the celebration without going up there, will they have that option, too? That's right. They certainly do. We're going to be live streaming the parade on our YouTube channel. Things get started at 11 a.m. The rally after the parade gets started at 1245, and Brock Baldridge will be representing our sports team out there. Yeah, it'll be live on our new news. But, again, as you say, everything streaming live on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Let's make it a great Wednesday.